Thank hey, you. Now this. Now you have choices like ice cream, party treats, even chocolate on Weight Watchers' new Quick Start Plus. Our introductory price is only $12 to join. Call Weight Watchers now. Should be much warmer in Iowa tomorrow with highs in the mid-30s. Nine degrees in Des Moines now. We'll be back at six. Now Dan Rather. Good evening. This is the CBS Evening News. Dan Rather reporting. Yet another costly red faces all around space shuttle launch delay. This time a bad bolt on a hatch and a bad weather bolt from the blue are being blamed. What's more, a rescheduled launch for tomorrow doesn't look good either. Bruce Hall has the latest on today's high-tech low comedy. We are going to scrub for today. And the confidence and, uh, in NASA's ability to maintain a launch schedule has been rocked by this series of embarrassing technical snafus and weather delays. Well, of course, it was just not our day. And it has not been NASA's month. In early January, it took seven attempts to get Columbia and her crew into orbit. And there were two delays getting them back. And this week's effort to get Challenger into orbit has turned into a comedy of errors. Sunday's launch was canceled when rain was predicted. But by lunchtime, the skies were clear and the weather ideal. NASA admitted they goofed. Today, the trouble started with the shuttle's door. Uh, the problem is that only one of the micro switches on the door indicates it's closed. Technicians tried to remove the door's handle, but failed because a small screw was stuck. So the call went out for a drill. When it finally arrived, 35 minutes later, the batteries were too weak to operate it. The proper drill has now arrived in the white room. And but the bit on the new drill crumbled. Finally, a hacksaw was brought in to cut off part of the handle. But by this time, the winds had picked up at both the launch pad and the emergency landing site. Currently, those winds are in excess of acceptable limits. After another two-hour wait, the seven weary astronauts climbed out of the shuttle and were told with NASA's tight 1986 schedule, they will try again tomorrow. But the forecast calls for freezing temperatures that could cause another postponement. Bruce Hall, CBS News, at the Kennedy Space Center. The meatpackers' strike against Hormel that began in Austin, Minnesota last August escalated today with firings reported in Texas, Nebraska, and Iowa, and with union threats of a coast-to-coast -coast boycott. Tonight, Karen Burris reports the strike is dividing loyalties, dividing families, dividing the home of the flagship plant. Hormel workers at three plants were fired today for honoring picket lines set up by strikers from Austin, Minnesota. Strikers now vow to shut down Hormel plants nationwide and are asking for a boycott of Hormel products. It is a strike, those on the line say, is becoming symbolic of the struggle to keep trade unions alive. Hey, you day. We got your number, Sheena. Every day, more cars pull into the Austin Hormel plant, and every day, strikers see more people willing to take their jobs. No integrity! Don Erickson spent 36 years inside the gates. He could forget the strike and retire, but he worries about the next generation of workers. There they are, they're fighting just like this, just to save their job and, and at least have a little dignity. The dignity of the workplace was traded for the reality of the food shelf nearly six months ago when workers walked off the job. Erickson passes time in the union hall. He will tell you about the golden days of Hormel, when workers believed they were the best, working for the best. There was a good life to be had in Hormel, but for families on strike, like the Bergstroms, the good times now seem lost. When you don't have money, you don't have that much to look forward to. It makes you feel real low. I mean, you, that you can't just go out and, you know, do what you want to do. We got National Guard here so that they can take scabs in to take our jobs and our money leave. National Guard troops, 800 strong, have kept the plant gates open, leaving the union with little chance to interfere with those who want to work. This is like a terrible nightmare, and I hope I'm going to wake up pretty soon. What does this do to the community? It'll never heal. It'll never heal this community. There has been plenty of time to think about going back to work. To some, staying out no longer makes sense. If I thought it'd do any good, you know, I could justify staying out, but it's not going to. Oh, it works. There is more here than a town divided. Families divide as brother watches brother cross the line in a place not big enough for anyone to hide for very long. 
Karen Boris, CBS News, Austin, Minnesota. In Washington, the Labor Department today said union workers in private industry received an average wage increase of just 2.3% in the first year of contracts negotiated in 1985. This report says that was the smallest gain in the 17 years since the department began keeping such records in 1968. The Philippines election now is just 11 days away. There were assurances from the White House today that the United States is not backing any specific candidate and will work with any, quote, democratically elected winner. But in Manila, U.S. Ambassador Stephen Bosworth warned that campaign violence, bribery, and vote buying are threatening the credibility of the election. As Bill Redeker reports, such irregularities are a way of life and death in the struggling experimental democracy that is the Philippines. Campaign worker Vicente Bernadito struggled for life this weekend, but eventually lost the battle. The latest of more than a dozen victims of Philippine political violence. People in general are very scared. The whole atmosphere is charged with fear. The countryside is where most of the voters live and where most of the fear and intimidation can be found. In the southern city of Danao, there is no question who the local political bosses want to win, and they've always delivered the vote. Danao is so notorious that during the last election here, 58,000 votes were cast, though only 56,000 men, women, and children actually live here. So-called ghost voters, their names from the local cemetery helped deliver a mandate for the Marcos candidates. To check fraud and voter intimidation, the chairman of a national watchdog group came to Danao to organize poll watchers. But Jose Concepcion got little help, no volunteers. There is a tremendous reluctance and fear on the people to organize themselves. Like many rural cities, Danao is virtually owned by one of Marco's political cronies. Here, Ramon Durano operates the local shipyard, cement factory, sugar mill, and militia. A proud man who likes the title warlord, he has driven out Concepcion's poll watchers in the past. Are you a lawyer or not? Durano says this time he'll allow poll watchers, but warns Concepcion against trying to impose American political standards. You cannot expect that the Filipinos will swallow your democracy hook, line, and sinker. Given the level of political violence and intimidation, no one here expects a completely clean election. Not in a nation where warlords and their armies still rule a lot of the countryside, a lot of its voters. Bill Redeker, CBS News, Danao, the Philippines. CBS News White House correspondent Bill Plant has been told that Richard Ling of California will be nominated later this week as the replacement for Agriculture Secretary John Block. Ling is a former number two man at agriculture. He's been a private consultant for the past year. The Supreme Court today refused to set aside a $2 billion judgment against the Exxon Corporation. The justices let stand a ruling that Exxon, in effect, must repay consumers nationwide for overcharges on oil. In practice, the money is to be paid to all the states. They, in turn, are to spend the money on energy programs and paying heating bills for the poor. Announcing the end of the noisy dishwasher, the Whirlpool Quiet Wash system is so quiet, you might think it only babies your dirty dishes caresses your silverware but this power clean energy saver model gets your dishes remarkably clean hi mom hi mom if only whirlpool could make the rest of your world this quiet whirlpool makes it easier for you whirlpool. three and four and five <laughs> just one more routine to go oh no this one helps keep you fit Inside. Fit inside? It's Kellogg's Bran Flakes. You get lots of fiber to help keep your insides fit and running smooth. Oh. And 100% of the iron you need each day. Uh, how do they taste? Really good. Uh, Come on, uh. you'll like this exercise. You just lift the spoon. Ooh. Kellogg's Bran Flakes does the rest. Mm. Kellogg's Bran Flakes. Take care of the inside. Libyan MiG fighter jets flew out to meet the U.S. fleet in the Mediterranean today, but when U.S. Navy jets rose to intercept them, the Libyans flew home. Those were Libya's actions today, but Libya's words weren't as clear-cut. There was talk of war from Muammar Gaddafi and talk of peace from his foreign minister. Doug Donnell reports from Tripoli. You have to fight with us. We are ready to fight with you. 
brave words or anxious ones. Muammar Gaddafi tonight hinted that he believes the American Sixth Fleet is intent on more than just a show of force. He claimed President Reagan has set out to assassinate him. And Gaddafi asked this crowd of foreign workers in Tripoli to help protect him. There are fresh indications that Gaddafi may be searching for a diplomatic way out of a showdown with America. His foreign minister is just back from talks with an American ally in North Africa, King Hassan of Morocco. We believe in dialogue. We are ready to sit with the United States. If they want to, to discuss, uh, we are for dialogue uh, with any country. But the government-sponsored rallies like tonight seem to emphasize the opposite. Among the foreign workers invited, several Americans. Steve Girard uh, is four days away from a presidential order to leave Libya and planning to comply. In a few months, uh, once they see what, what's going to happen, uh, you'll find uh, other nationalities coming in here to fill the void. How do you feel about that? business. With $400 million of assets at stake, some American companies will try to sidestep the boycott. A Houston-based construction firm plans to continue work on this enormous water pipeline project under a British subsidiary. Occidental Petroleum has reminded American officials that its operations in Libya are 51% Libyan-owned. Until now, Western diplomats here have said that the threat of confrontation with America has worked in Gaddafi's favor, rekindling Libyan patriotism and drawing attention away from some of this country's already serious economic problems. But tonight, Gaddafi described a threat to his survival in very personal terms, as if the enemy were closing in on him. Doug Tennell, CBS News, Tripoli. With Vice President George Bush on hand at an important transfer of power today in Honduras, a key U.S. ally in Central America, before 40,000 spectators in the National Sports Stadium, Jose Ascona Oyo was sworn in as President of Honduras. It's the first time in years that one freely elected president has succeeded another, said the new Honduran leader. We reaffirm our friendship with the U.S. and vow to work for democracy. In Poland today, Solidarity Union leader Lech Wałęsa was ordered to stand trial February 11th. The Soviet dictated Warsaw government is charging him with slander for questioning the official results of what were called last year's parliamentary elections. If he's convicted, Wawinsa could be jailed for up to two years. Voyager 2 is now long gone from its closest encounter with the planet Uranus, but it's still beaming back fresh news from two billion miles away. Some of the latest, more detailed pictures of the planet's major moons, including dark pockmarked umbriel, with what may be a ring of frost and aerial with its broad valleys and fault lines. Voyager also bragged a little. Here's a photo of one of the 10 new moons it discovered. So new, one of them doesn't have a name yet. Reagan is a joke, you know, big joke, you know. He, you know he's not serious enough to be president, you know. I think he's doing a great job. We didn't know where to turn when you've lost everything. You don't know what to do. When a tornado wiped out the home of Marv and Marion Kammerlander, their all-state home replacement cost guarantee paid to completely rebuild it. Leave it to the good hands people. Little over three months after we had been totally destroyed by the tornado, we moved back into our new home. And I guess that really proves you're in good hands with Allstate. A member of the Sears Financial Network. Phillips Lax Caps or Chocolate at X Lax. Both have the same effect of laxative, but Lax Caps has a gentle softener. Lax Caps or X Lax. For easy relief, it's your choice. Phillips Lax Caps. Easy does it. Traps. I hate them, and they don't always work. So I use Decon Rat and Mouse Killers. They're dead sure to kill. Rats and mice simply eat Decon and die. So why take chances? Use Decon Baits. Dead sure to kill. At least seven deaths were linked to bitter cold today as a dagger of frigid air stabbed deep into the deep south. The wind chill plunged to 40 below in North Carolina. Cars piled up amid snow and ice in Charleston, South Carolina. For some Florida vegetable farmers, it could be economic life and death with a hard freeze threat that could ruin crops in the Florida fields. Killing temperatures also threaten citrus growers. Forecasters say tomorrow's South Florida temperatures could fall lower than New England's and Montana's, and Miami faced its coldest day in 45 years. President Reagan's all set to deliver what's being billed as a long on vision, short on details, and just plain short State of the Union speech tomorrow night. Tonight, CBS News correspondent Bob Schieffer has the results of a new CBS News New York Times poll 
indicating some sharp splits in what the American people see as the State of the Union 1986. The economy is in good shape. The military is much stronger than it used to be. I think the perception of America has changed a lot for the better. Um, I think that the country is going more towards the person, the haves instead of the have-nots. As the president puts the finishing touches on the speech he'll deliver tomorrow night, those comments sum up the findings of our national telephone poll last week of 1,581 adults. White Americans are feeling good about the state of the nation. Black Americans are not. By nearly two to one, white Americans said things are better now than five years ago. But black Americans said just the opposite. And while 60% of the whites predicted even better times ahead, blacks didn't share the feeling. Reagan is a joke, you know. Big joke, you know. He, you know. He's not serious enough to be president, you know. I think he's doing a great job. Why? I just feel I, I have always felt that Ronald Reagan is an American and he is for America. Again, a striking contrast when we asked if people approved of Mr. Reagan's handling of the presidency. Only 37% of blacks approved, more than in the past, but nowhere near the approval rating he gets from whites. And overall, his 65% approval rating is higher than Dwight Eisenhower's at this point of his presidency. Those figures could vary three points either way. But Mr. Reagan is more popular than his own programs. His approval rating on the economy, for example, is 13 points less than his overall popularity. The United States really seems to be failing. There's uh, the big uh, deficit that we have. And those polled trust Congress more than the president to cut that deficit. Nearly half say it will take a tax increase to do it. Veteran Republican Barry Goldwater likes the president's handling of the economy, but he reflects the thoughts of those polled on the way Mr. Reagan handles specific problems. But when you say the State of the Union and you assume that all of our people are doing better, I have to say they're not. Harlem Democrat Charles Rangel agrees with that. Uh, a society cannot ignore those needs on the bottom and just talk about the leadership uh, that we've had in reducing taxes and cutting back spending. So Mr. Reagan comes here tomorrow night knowing most Americans believe he's been doing a good job, but that must be tempered by the recognition that more and more these days, opinion is splitting strictly on racial lines, and few can be happy about that. Bob Schieffer, CBS News at the Capitol. The National Association of Realtors said more than 3,200,000 existing single-family homes were sold in 1985, the first time since 1979 sales have topped 3 million. Listen to the beat, the early morning breakfast beat. Listen to the beat, the early morning breakfast beat. Mix and eat. It's smoother, it's creamier, it's delicious. Now this go. It's true, you know, American industry needs energy to grow. But imported energy is unpredictable. It can even be taken away. So our industries are using more electricity from resources found here at home, like coal and nuclear energy. And we're all using energy more efficiently. Coal and nuclear energy. That's homegrown energy for America. Former President Richard Nixon is in satisfactory condition in a Miami hospital tonight, being treated for what an aide calls complications from the flu. He checked in at the Miami hospital while on the way back from the Bahamas vacation. In recent weeks, the crisis facing Britain's Margaret Thatcher has grown and grown. What began with a debate over the bailout of a business in trouble now involves charges of cover-up and questions of who leaked what to whom. As Tom Fenton reports, it all came to a head today. Britain's Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, the Iron Lady, whose reputation for honesty and integrity is legendary, left Downing Street this afternoon to face accusations in Parliament that she lied to the British public and presided over a cover-up. It all began with a minor dispute over whether a failing helicopter company should be sold to an American or a European group. That provoked a bitter debate in her cabinet. Three weeks ago, the defense minister stormed out of the cabinet, accused Mrs. Thatcher of lying and browbeating her ministers, and quit. 
I have resigned from the cabinet and I will make a full statement later today. Last Friday, her trade minister was forced to resign after being caught in a web of half-truths about his role in the dispute. This afternoon in Parliament, the heat was on Mrs. Thatcher to explain her part in the case. If the Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, cannot tell that truth, then she cannot stay. If she will not tell that truth, she must go. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, the party opposite have deliberately blown up this issue out of all proportion. The wider issue is more than Mrs. Thatcher's honesty. It's her style of governing. When she had a war to fight in the Falklands, her strength and single-minded determination made her the most popular British Prime Minister since Winston Churchill. Now that image has changed. The public thinks that though she may never have told a straight lie, she has a great deal to hide. And that, for someone with her reputation, is particularly damaging. Tonight, Mrs. Thatcher is back in Downing Street trying to reassess her political future, which has now been placed in doubt. Ironically, only a few weeks ago, she was talking about aiming for not only a third term in office, but possibly a fourth as well. Tom Fenton, CBS News, London. Winter kills and snow is dangerous, yet another reminder has happened in a small town along the coast of the Japan Sea. Most town residents were asleep when a huge wall of snow came crashing down a hillside. Some homes were buried, 13 people were killed, another 23 were rescued from under the snow yesterday. This area of Japan has been hit by heavy snowfalls recently. Japan's drive to be number one, the excellent Japanese education system, teenage suicides, schoolyard bullying and extortion at school. Some or all of those elements are in tonight's report from Tokyo by Wyatt Andrews. It shocks the Japanese that so many children have grown so desperate they are killing themselves. Takashi Kurosawa drank a lethal dose of Paraquat. Ken Numasawa hanged himself in the woods. At their funerals, teachers and friends apologized for not realizing things had gone so far. The problem causing all the suicides is bullying, school child playground bullying, anything from simple teasing to lunch money extortion. It is a problem that is not new to Japan and certainly isn't confined to Japan, but the Japanese know that this number of suicides is a symptom of something gone very wrong. To many educators, what may have gone wrong is Japan's vaunted system of education, a system that teaches children from first grade on to act and think within the group. Children eat in groups, they learn in groups. After classes, they even clean the school in groups. What's missing, according to critics, is any notion of respect for the individual. To some experts, bullying is an expression of Japan's group mentality with a mean streak. The pressure to succeed in the group makes bullies single out anyone who is different. They have to let their frustration out somehow. So they pick on the weak. The reaction to bullying signals a change in Japan. For the first time, the Japanese are questioning whether their cookie-cutter system of education is preparing Japan for the 21st century, whether the system produces too much sameness and not enough respect for individual creativity. Japan's greatest strength, the group, could, through bullying, be exposing a weakness. Wyatt Andrews, CBS News, Tokyo. Please. Mr. Garfield, welcome to Embassy Suites Hotel. My room. Oh, all our rooms are really two-room suites for the price of a single room. Beautiful. Don't change a thing. The living room, sir. Love what you've done with this room. The bedroom. This is great. I need my space. And of course, you'll want to take advantage of Embassy Suites free breakfast. Food. Served every morning. At Embassy Suites, you don't have to be a fat cat to enjoy the sweet life. I resemble that remark. Professional dental technicians use instruments like this to remove denture stain. Effortance powerful blue action formula can help you keep that professional looking clean. Professional strength Effortant removes even stubborn stains between teeth. Thanks a lot, Citibank.
You had to make your Visa and MasterCard better than other banks. Shh. Just by using them, we earn bonuses called City Dollars. Now, they could have saved us up to 40% on a color TV or a stereo. Shh. But we used ours to get something strictly for Vincent's amusement. <laughs> oh, isn't it wonderful? <laughs> Citibank's Visa and MasterCard. It's Citibank that makes them better. The team that gave the world the Super Bowl shuffle arrived home today after dancing all over the New England Patriots 46 to 10. Super Bowl 20 was the most lopsided of them all. And no matter the weather, Ned Butter reports Chicago this day was a city where nothing was unbearable. It was eight degrees above zero with a wind chill factor of minus 30, but nobody can say that Chicago doesn't give its heroes a warm welcome. Everybody knew they were gonna win. That's what? how they know who's number one. <laughs> Almost too cold to snow, it rained confetti instead. Shredded computer paper tossed in the air by a crowd estimated by police at over a million people. The Bears, trapped inside their buses by the press of fans, instead climbed out onto the tops and waved from there. We are the Super Bowl champs! <coughs> woof, 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 woof! Yeah! It was the kind of day on which everyone and everything in this city became part of the Bears. The world's tallest building, the Sears Tower, became the Bears Tower with a little editing. Daly Plaza is Bears Plaza. And a section of Lakeshore Drive was renamed George Hallis Drive after the team's legendary founder. I think it means that we finally made it and they were great. Hey! Isn't this sweet? It was the kind of day when, if you asked, every kid could do the Super Bowl shuffle. We are the Bears, shuffling crew, shuffling our dollar, doing it for you. We're so bad, we know we're good, blowing our minds like we knew we would. Thank you, Chicago! The wind was blowing at 20 miles an hour. The temperature was dropping. A million people didn't care. We're number one! We're number one! We're number one, one, one! And indisputably, the city is number one, at least until baseball season. Ned Potter, CBS News, Chicago. And that's the CBS Evening News for this Monday. Dan Rather reporting from New York. Thank you for joining us. Good night. She's the mystery. I don't care where you come from. Alaska will get you. Alaska is the story that my father told of swift rivers running with salmon and gold Alaska is so many things I have never known Alaska is the warming sun calling me home Alaska My hands keep this ride going so when arthritis pain flares up Anison. 23% more medicine than regular pain relievers to relieve minor arthritis pain for hours. Anison works. Anison. More medicine. Studies have suggested a possible association between Rye syndrome and medicines with aspirin or salicylates in children with flu. So for flu-related diarrhea, give your child Kaopectate, the diarrhea specialist. It has no salicylates, no aspirin. To hit the right note on your personal computer... You've got to have the right personal printer. That's why IBM offers an ensemble of personal printers. For text, for color, for graphs, for pictures, for speed, for charts, for letter quality, for whatever you compose. IBM personal printers for the finishing touch. Tonight, the night pirates are here. An elderly agent harbors deadly information. Will he crack under pressure or keep a secret? On Scarecrow and Mrs. King. This is CBS. Next. We interrupt the news to bring you the news. Good news! I'm Larry. I'm Barry. Barry's standing by. What's going on, Barry? It's our soft shell sale at Taco John's. Oh. Every day, all this week, get two soft shells at $1.59. Every day? Every day.